Hi guys, my name is Rushali and I hope you all are doing great. Paper one was great for you. You have performed well. And now we have to focus on paper number two. Today in the session, we'll be studying how we have to present our case study based question. How we have to write the answer for case study based question. I have November 22 paper with me for you people to discuss. And we'll be seeing few things that are important while presenting a case study based question. Now, this question number one is from Contract Act. They have said X has agreed to pay Y amount of rupees 1 lakh. Okay. And this 1 lakh to pay him Y borrow, X borrows this money from W. What is the contract? Why he's going to pay? To kill Z. Now, well, uh, W is also aware that this money has been borrowed. This loan has been taken to kill Z. Y kills Z, but X refuses to pay money. Okay? X does not pay enough money. Now, we have been asked, what is the valid contract over here between X and Y? Is it a valid contract? Or between X and W, which one is a valid contract? So, see, this over here, if you see, someone has asked to uh, kill or murder where these things are illegal things are in involved unlawful things are involved which are in contradiction to law is that a valid contract or is it a void contract that is the first thing we'll be seeing the agreement over here if you see is illegal it is an agreement which the law forbids to be made now how we uh, discuss that we'll be presenting the paper first we'll writing the provision then case facts facts of the case then we'll be relating them, relating facts to the provision, okay? And this is your point one, this is your two, and relating the facts to the provision, then you'll be giving a conclusion. Now here you see, they have given how they have mentioned the provision. As an essential con uh, condition, the lawful consideration and object is must to make an arrangement. For definition of arrange, uh, agreement, we have seen that you need two important things, right? One is your lawful consideration, okay? And the other one is the object, why you are getting into this agreement. These two are the important things to make it a valid contract, okay? Valid agreement as per section 10. If you don't know the section, it is not compulsory for you to mention. Now, further, as per section 23 of the Indian contract that agreement is invalid or void illegal or void when if the consideration is unlawful that's what they have mentioned if the consideration or object is unlawful or contradictory law that is forbidden by law which is not allowed as per the law okay and such agreement is void and not enforceable by law, which is not where the objective or the consideration is illegal, unlawful, then you say this agreement is void. Even the connected agreements, this is very important for the next part of the answer. Even the connected agreements or collateral transactions to illegal agreement are also void. You have to mention the provisions correctly over here. Now we have mentioned the provisions. Then facts of the case. If X agrees to pay 1 lakh to Y if Y kills it. This is the facts of the case. Here only they have given the conclusion. You can do it the same way or you can mention the facts and then give it. Here two points are given. So facts of the case and your conclusion or the correct answer is also given over here. Agreement between X and Y is void being illegal in nature. As the nature of the contract is illegal, the nature of the agreement is illegal, this is an illegal or void agreement. Okay. Then, now what they said, X is going to pay Y if uh, he kills Z, right? So, X has agreed to pay Y if Y kills Z. So, agreement between X and Y is void because it is illegal. Now, X borrows money from W to pay Z, uh, to pay Y, he has to borrow some money. This 1 lakh he's going to borrow from Y. Now, he's also aware, Y is also aware of the purpose, purpose of the loan, right? So he has done wrong over here. He's also aware of the purpose of the particular thing, particular agreement. Now, X and W, the contract that they have made, the agreement that they have made also, also void because all the collateral transaction, all the 
collateral transactions to illegal agreement are also void. Okay. I hope it is clear how we present it. First, we have to mention the provision, then your facts of the case, then your conclusion. And here you can write your analysis, how it is connected with the question. Okay. In four, or you could just combine this analysis and facts of the case, make it point number two, point number one, and conclusion. This is how you present in three paragraphs or three points, three major points also you can write. I hope question one was clear to you how we present the paper for case study. We'll take one more example, question number 1B. Right? Now, 1B says, Mr. R, a manufacturer of toys, approached MNO to supply raw material. Now, R has approached MNO to supply raw material. Worth rupees 1,50,000. R offered a credit period of one month. R was offered a credit period of one month. R went to the company prior to the due date and met Mr. C. Right? He we went and met Mr. C. And at the billing counter, who convinced the former that the payment was made to him as the billing cashier. He said that the cashier was on leave and Mr. C portrayed, he disguised himself as being the employee of the company. R being uh, trusting the company's employee, he paid the amount of 1,50,000. Uh, he also took a receipt of it, signed and sealed receipt from the person, Mr. C. Okay. In few days, R received a recovery notice from the company for payment of 1,50,000. Now, R got this notice and he said that like, he has received a notice and he said, inform the company that he has already paid. He has already paid that amount he has uh, already paid that amount and he need not to pay that again he said that i've already paid the amount and the amount being an outsider had genuine reason that c who claimed an employee and had issued in my receipt he said that i don't know that c was not your employee i thought he's a uh, employee and he also gave me a receipt that is important over here company filed a suit against r for non-payment of things discuss fate of suit of mr uh, of the liability and the liability that Mr. R has towards the company as on the current date in consonance with the provisions of the company. Would your answer be different if a receipt under the company seal was not issued? Now, here it recalls you that we have to check doctrine of indoor management. In the Companies Act, we have studied doctrine of indoor management. What things have we studied in doctrine of indoor management? Let's see. According to the doctrine of indoor management, the outsiders are not deemed to have notice of the internal affairs of the company. You have to first define the doctrine. They are entitled to assume the facts of the, uh, the acts of the director or other officers of the company are validly performed. They have said that we have to believe that all the acts done by the company are their members only and they are rightfully done, they are lawfully done. The person who is an outsider does not know if this person is your employee or not. Okay. Now, if they are within the scope of their apparent authority, if they have this authority, suppose someone is sitting on the cashier place and we think that he has the authority. If he doesn't sit on the cashier place and he's from the payment system and he says, okay, give me the money, I'll receive it. He's not receiver, but he's the payer. Still, we, if we give him money, that is wrong. Okay. That is where we'll be wrong. We had to have the authority also, like the person whom we are giving the money or the person whom we are believing as the officer, he should have the authority. So long as an act is valid under the articles, it is done in a particular manner, an outsider dealing with the company is entitled to assume that it has been done in the manner required. Outsider is going to assume that it was done correctly. There was nothing wrong over here. This is the indoor management rule. This is the doctrine of indoor management. Okay. Now, and also what they have said in this answer, they have given you in the landmark case, they have given the reference of the landmark case. If you remember, give it or else it is not necessary to mention it. As much as you remember, you have to mention, just write the provision correct, doctrine correct. Okay. Then what we see further is, in the instant case, R is not able to, uh, R is not liable to pay 1,50,000. R will not pay rupees 1,50,000 because R thought C is the employee of MNO. Okay, this is the relevant thing. And also he got a receipt which is 
signed and sealed in the name of company so he had the genuine reasons to trust the employee of the company he is not aware of the internal affairs if something is changing inside the company people employees are changing how is an outsider going to know he has to be cautious if he didn't receive the receipt then only he would have become uh, suspectful that why i have not received the receipt received the receipt and if there something is wrong okay so here r is not liable okay r is not liable then liability of r in case no receipt is issued by mr c if mr c did not give receipt receipt was not given by mr c so what could have been done there are some exceptions to doctrine of indoor management though we don't know the internal affairs it is important that we cannot be negligible we have to do our duties we need to make necessary inquiries see what they have given suspicion of irregularity is an exception to doctrine of indoor management doctrine of indoor management is no way rewards those who have who, those who behave negligently it is the duty of the outsider to make necessary inquiry if something seems suspicious there you have to make the inquiry if the transaction is in not in the ordinary course of business if someone you pay the money you are definitely going to get a receipt but if someone is not going to give you the receipt or the sign or stamp is different than the earlier one then you have to make the necessary inquiry okay this was the provision mentioned here then they have given facts of the case and conclusion if a receipt under the company seal was not issued by mr c after receiving payment mr r is liable to pay okay if r did not get the receipt receipt was not given and r came back he did not suspect anything he was just negligent that okay if i have not got the receipt not a big thing then r becomes liable okay because of his negligence and this will be deemed to be a negligence on the part of mr r mr r is going to be the negligent it is the duty to make the necessary inquiry to check whether mr c is liable to take the payment or not we have to check that if mr c is someone who can get the payment from the customers from the clients or not okay so this is how you present your answers for the questions i hope you have understood how we have to go three key things you have to always remember provision then facts of the case how they are related with the question and provision how facts of the case are related to the provision and your conclusion okay i hope this has helped you and you will perform well in your papers all the very best for your papers thank you